Hey, this is Jim Grisanzio from the Oracle Groundbreakers team. Welcome. I'm going to have a conversation with two very special uh, special guests here. Uh, so Vanu, Vanu Mantha and Chip Baber. And these guys run a program that I'm really, really interested in because I've been involved with it actually for a few years. It's called Oracle Code Innovate. And it's, it's, it's really interesting because it's an engineer to engineer project and um, it involves customers and developers, you know, like an agile s sort of a scrum, you know, framework, but it's better that they explain it. So guys, what's new with Oracle Code Innovate? Abinu, Jim, how about you thank, start? Thank you so much, Jim. Really appreciate it. Uh, you know, appreciate having us on this. Uh, Code Innovate is really exciting uh, for us and especially for me and Chip in North America primarily. Um, the whole thing started out uh, a couple of years ago when we were talking to a lot of our customers and especially in the developer community. Um, they keep asking us one question, right? Hey, you know, we have various products. Um, they're all out there, highly knowledgeable about them. But how do you integrate all these things to solve a specific problem? business problem you know how do i take one use case and that may require multiple components bring that together and then quickly take that to the marketplace because in this day and age especially with cloud you know nobody has the time to work on research on something for weeks and months right and uh, we needed primarily to focus on three things how do we integrate various components gain hands-on experience, right? You know, developers want to learn something brand new, right? Now, how do we help them gain knowledge on various cloud components or the cloud products? And then uh, put all these things together in a quick manner. And that's where, you know, I was working with Chip. And in fact, right now, he has a lot of the great ideas as well. And then we said, all right, right why don't we come up with like a hackathon style uh, program? We call it Code Innovate and uh, where we could pick up a set of use cases and help our customers really learn various components, technical components that would go into the solution and then bring that to life in two to three days. That is the whole conversation behind it so that we could add value in the process, teach to the developers and make it really interesting and fun for them you know, as they execute this. That's the whole reason why we started this program. You mentioned something really, really interesting. It's a lot of fun. And, and I, you know, sort of the events that I've been involved with um, so far, I, I noticed that you can put 50 engineers in the room and they're hacking on, you know, on your know, projects, but they're also having a rip roaring good time. So Chip, what's been your experience? Well, I think the beauty of this program is that it combines everything that engineers love uh, together in three days, right? So, if you say, what does a typical engineer like to do most? Well, that's solve a problem. Uh, what do they often not have the most time to do in the day, which is to work on the problems that they want to, to explore those new technologies. So we begin these events by pairing engineers from the customer with engineers from Oracle. We do a, an ideation session as a team. We actually do a team group building exercise between Oracle and, and our attendees. And we come up, we let the attendees come up with the idea they want to build over the next three days. And then we do everything in our power from Oracle to, to not build it for them, but to build it with them, to truly co-develop and have a working first pass prototype at the end of the third day. And then we allow uh, all the different teams to compete, which is another aspect most developers like, you know, who can build the coolest thing the fastest. Uh, we allow them to present back to leadership, to to showcase their hard work, to showcase their ideas, most importantly, to showcase innovation and how fast it can happen in the cloud. And, uh, and then, of course, there's awards at the end, and, and who doesn't like to win? So uh, we, we have a good time with all that. <laughs> and they do compete. I mean, it, it's actually very interesting. They actually really do compete. Um, walk, walk me through an event. Okay. Um, you mentioned three days. These are two or three days, you know, actually on a customer site. Walk me through an event. What actually happens? Yeah. So uh, first of all, our events can be two or three days. If we're in person, uh, we, we like three days. It just gives us enough time to really build a good prototype. Uh, if we're virtual, um, we can often do it in two days. Our event starts with what we call uh, ideation. Uh, we'll formulate, uh, if, let's say we have 12 people at an event gym. Uh, we'll divide up into basically four groups, 
of, of, of three or three groups of four. Uh, each group will have an engineer then assigned from Oracle uh, that specializes in the technology that, that they're interested in, in as a whole exploring. Uh, with that said, we begin what we call ideation. So we actually go through a design thinking paradigm at the beginning of the event. We have sticky notes. Uh, even if we're online, we use color coding, uh, just like we would sticky notes. And we ask each developer, you know, what is it you like to learn? What is it you've always wanted to do in the cloud? Most importantly, what do you think would help your business? And you'd be amazed at the ideas that come back. And it's not two or three. Uh, often in 30 minutes, we're filling, you know, uh, little boards like this, three or four of them full of ideas. Um, and then we, we serve after all the ideas are captured to kind of see the patterns. And what one of the beauties of Code Innovate is you, you might get a really bad idea from one developer, but it spawns the best idea from the next developer. And so we start tagging the sticky notes together and, and you form a pattern and the team really gets into, into this design thinking exercise. Uh, and, and once we have enough sticky notes linked together, we formulate a goal statement. What is it we're going to build together over the next three days? Uh, our engineers help scope, like help determine what we can and can't do in, in the, for a three-day event pattern. Uh, and then we make a task list, not a full project plan, because that would take too much time. What are the first five to eight things we're going to do, Jim? Which it developer is going to do what? Yeah, so it's all agile. Very, you know, scrumish. You know, so you're basically you're carving out what you can do immediately. And then exactly. So these are real projects. These are real projects that the customer engineers are working on. These are not sort of, sort of you know, demos, right? And no, not at all, really. The beauty of this program, Jim, again, uh, is through the ideation phase, we're aligning what they love to do at the developer level to the goals of what the executives and the business wants it, really. So when they bring in, they bring in, um, a set of use cases that are hard on their topic and they prioritize them. And out of those use cases, they say, all right, now let's go and work on this. Now, as part of the ideation, as Chip was explaining a moment ago, mm -hmm. there are sometimes, right, not one way to solve a problem. There could be multiple ways to solve it as well. That's where they get excited. Hey, I want to try it in a different way to solve this, right? What is the best way to solve it? I've seen in cases where you know the use case may be the same, but two different teams try to do uh, solve it in two different ways, and then let the best team win. And ultimately, right, that would be the solution that goes in through rigorous testing and production at the customer location. So it continues after the event, then. It does. It does. So we um, the event is really just the start of this partnership, Jim. Uh, after the event, we often find the developers connect with us on LinkedIn. We we're, we have Slack channels between development teams. And then uh, Vanu uh, it actually has a program that he runs called Cloud Coaching, right? Where even though we may not be in the same room, or I may be in Virginia, they may be in the West Coast, um, when they need help to solve a technical problem, we assign a cloud coach. Uh, and they help them one-on-one -on -one to, to find sample code or see a demo or do a workshop or, or, or even, you know, potentially write example code of what that next phase of that product may be, project may be. So we want to continue this relationship to help these ideas, you know, not just be ideas, but go to production uh, to, to really, truly help business move forward. Mm -hmm. And also, Jim, just to add on top of it, what I noticed is 90% of the customers once they do a code in a way, they do want to keep coming back again because this is a continuous learning process for them. Right. Um, imagine this acceleration on steroids, right? You know, that's what they do, right? Uh, you know, 90% of the time, you know, everybody's busy keeping their lights on. But if you want to do some kind of digital transformation, or if you are thinking about new ways of doing things to meet your business demands, this is the best way to get a you know shot in the arm kind of thing, right? Now you do it in three days and you say that, okay, all right, now we know this came to life, this works, let's take it to the next level. It right. could be cloud coaching, it could be another use case down the line. It's a continuous engagement with us is how we look at it. It even could be another event, Jim. I mean, this isn't a one and done. Uh, for us, we would hope that Code Innovate would be a repeatable pattern with, our, mm -hmm. with you, you know, so that when that next round of ideas, when your next development cycle before it starts, do a code innovate with us to jumpstart it. Interesting. Okay, so we're we get together, we ideate, 
we come up with a bunch of projects that we want to do together and we start working. Um, talk about just in general, some of the use cases, some of the technologies that the engineers would actually be hacking on for a couple of days. Well, Jim, it, it's across the board. Any technology that's in our, our PaaS or IaaS stack um, can be used at an event. But I'm gonna give you an example of, of one of the most innovative use cases I've done, uh, I've seen at a Code Innovate event in two years, which was we had a state and local customer um, whose demographic, their population was really growing and it was growing with a very young population. Uh, and this young population had a lot of animals, especially dogs and cats, and they kept losing them, right? As, losing as a them? young population, yeah, they would loot, their dog would run off, you know, um, and the animal shelter was doing their job to, to pick up wow. the loose animal, take them back and get cared. Um, the problem was, is that uh, the animal shelter wasn't a 24 by seven call center, right? right. And so come, you know, 5 or 6 p.m. at night, the, the dogs were cared for, their food, food and water was there, uh, but the employees went home. But the younger crowd that had lost the pet was panicking, right? Mm -hmm. I, want, I, I need information now because that's the age we're in. So this particular group wrote an application called Pet Finder, which used our, our digital system, our chatbot technology, to tap into APIs um, uh, within the locality, uh, and, and, and build some expansions as well uh, so that the individual could, could essentially ask the chatbot, um, you know, questions. Um, I, you know, I've lost a pet. What is it? Is it a dog, cat, other? It's a dog. What color? What kind? And it would run through a th few filters and then it would eventually display to them the, the last 10 animals or the, you know, last 15 animals that had come in with the picture. So that if, if your dog was lost, in a matter of minutes, you could know, hey, he's okay. I can go pick him up tomorrow morning. I can wow. sleep. I can sleep tonight. I don't have to be out, you know, walking the streets. <laughs> uh, um, also took burden. Interestingly enough, it was not just a solid problem for the animal shelter. It took calls away because people were calling into their 311, 411, and 911 lines for a lost pet. So now we were able to, to free up resources uh, on, on, on those, that side as well. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. Um, so, some other, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, no, yeah, yeah, just, you know, throw out a few use cases. These, these are interesting. Yeah, we see a whole lot of use cases coming in nowadays around machine learning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we just did an event with a, a large customer who wanted to improve customer uh, satisfaction. So uh, we took, uh, and they took recordings of people actually calling in to their customer support. They um, transcribed the recordings, ran the, the transcriptions through our natural language processing uh, capabilities in, the, in our autonomous database, did machine learning on it to identify patterns of success. You know, what is it that, that certain agents are doing to solve problems and, and, and move things forward faster? And hopefully not only identify those patterns, but we let, then leverage the machine learning that they did across all their other applications. Maybe they create a digital assistant that helps answer questions more intelligently, or they have um, uh, advanced reporting or, or information for the call center so that they can be more effective, uh, answer things quicker. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we see a lot of integration use cases, especially in banking. And, and um, just did one for a large bank uh, with open open banking and payment platforms, right? There's a whole world of new ways that people can pay today from Venmo to PayPal to uh, you name it. And, and providing our financial institutions the ability to plug into legacy systems, maybe a legacy e-business suite system, but then automatically prepay a credit card in 20 seconds or less uh, that they've never been able to do before using our cloud. That's a, that's a powerful value add to the business. Indeed. And just to add on top of it, right, because the integration is so big for us, uh, Jim, the reason is everybody is in this hybrid cloud environment. You have some of them on-prem, some of them in cloud. And also, you have a multi-cloud environment, right? It's not just one cloud. And so the requests that are coming our way is, how do I have the data liquidity across all these systems so that I could integrate with them, right? You could have an application, uh, a cloud native application sitting, let's say in Azure, but we have the interconnectivity, but the database cloud may be in uh, the Oracle environment, right? You know, it could be uh, our Xa data cloud service or you know, our autonomous data 
based service. And then you have some of the older systems sitting in um, some on-prem data centers, right? How do I integrate all these pieces and get the right data to the right folks to support the business uh, with our, let's say, advanced Oracle Analytics Cloud? Those are the use cases, right? You know, because integration is really powerful in and uh, you know, how do you envision a solution to solve a specific business problem, still have the data liquidity across all these environments? So that's a huge thing for us, and we keep getting quite a few of those integration uh, use cases. It's fascinating. One of the things I noticed in, you know, f- for the events that I was actually involved with was in the ideation sessions, uh, these use cases would come up and they would be flushed out. And um, there would always be like 10 other ideas that, you know, they didn't have enough, enough you know, time to actually implement in the you know, three days. Uh, there was never any shortage of ideas. That's the first thing. And the second thing was the the engineers always had to scope it down because, you know, you get the engineers in a room together and they start hacking away for like an hour of, so in an hour ideation session, they're going to boil the ocean and they get this huge, huge application, you know, we only got three days. So what happens is they end up staying late and they get in early and, and it's actually kind of fun, but you always have to scope them down. Talk a little bit about, you know, this need to scope things down a little bit because you have to build in pieces. And um, I always just, I always thought it was just a major, a major part of the event is having this discussion, uh, the ideation to scope things down so you can actually build something in the end of the three days. Well, well, Jim, when I, when I scope, I think of it as almost like a sprint, right? You know, um, the nice thing is, is when you're in a group, you know, you're going to present on the end of the third day. Right. There's, there's no option not to present. So you have to, you have to then think, what is it we can do and how can we work in parallel to accomplish the most possible? Uh, so we really, we take an agile development process approach, right? Um, we'll build a Kanban board, we'll assign tasks, we'll make sure we do things in parallel, but yet there's order of operations. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll remove components or aspects or uh, even simulate it. You know, there's been a number of times where we've needed access to REST services or APIs that we didn't quite know when we got in the room. And and rather than just wait for access to be turned on from a customer system, we'll mock up the endpoints in apiary and, 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 and create a first pass dashboard or something like that, and then plug them in at a later date, you know, when they're turned on. Um, so we, we think about really doing an agile process um, like, right. like most shops would do only ours is in three days. So the events that I were at were all physical. I was there. I went to India three, four times with the United States once. Um, talk about some of the changes you've made in the program recently to evolve it. So it's a virtual event as well as, as well as a physical event when we can all, all you know, travel again. Absolutely. I'll take a first stab at this menu and then you can, you can change as well. Um, so when we talk about a virtual code innovate, uh, we wanted to keep the fun. We wanted to keep the things engineers love. Uh, the bulk of our changes are moving what maybe we did on whiteboarding, which was a heavy part of in-person, uh, into common tools. So uh, we're going to use GitHub and, and some of the, you know, the wiki functionality, the projects functionality, the issue functionality that's already there that most of us have used before, maybe in a very innovative new way uh, for that component. So we still do design thinking. Um, and we're going to more importantly take advantage of some of the, you know, we're using Zoom right now, uh, Zoom and Zoom breakout sessions so that we can have that group dynamic as a whole with, you know, 12, 15, 20 people, but still have the personal touch and the, coll- the collaboration and co-development through, uh, through Zoom breakouts. Um, and then the, the executive component is still there. And Benu, maybe I can speak to that on the third day, the executive component and the, and the readouts to leadership is very important. Do you want to, you want to cover that piece? It, it, indeed, right? See, the way I look at it is the crux of the code innovate either we do it physically or in a virtual environment is the same. Um, there's again, the third day, the third component as Chip was saying, right? Uh, it all comes from the executive sponsorship, right? Every organization will say what is important for them, defining what is important for them and then being out there for the developers and then uh, making sure right, what they develop uh, and what they're putting it out there 
a thing uh, that is meaningful for them from their business perspective. I think the third day is very important because it validates and then you're bringing all these components together. And uh, it's a very well cherished moment as well for the whole teams to see right, what they built over a period of three days, everything coming together really is important. The way I look at it is all the pieces that made this program successful when we did it uh, in person are still already there because still they're as relevant, if not more, right, in a virtual environment, uh, you know. But even though we started this uh, to an extent, right, you know, with this COVID-19 response and then now nobody can travel, but I see its applicability way beyond COVID-19 as well. Uh, because there were times, right, people used to come and say, you know, there was a large customer. We needed to do this even simultaneously here in the U.S. as well as in India. And they were like, hey, you know, we have a team in Europe. We have a team in Asia Pacific, right? How do we do this? There were some challenges, you know, in the fiscal world. Now all those barriers are being removed while preserving all the components, uh, like you know, everything from having fun to really aligning to the business and having the executive component, all those. So I expect, uh, uh, you know, definitely both formats to continue uh, long after COVID-19 is gone. Uh, but I think it's removing a lot more barriers, and that's what excites me quite a bit. It's almost like it's it's a whole new aspect of the program that really needed it anyway. You know, it's just it's, it's, it's sort of a growth point. Um, and I just want to echo your point about um, you know, that third day, because the events that I've been at, that third day has some real energy there because you're finishing up working in the morning, and then and there's a deadline because you're going to present in you know an hour or two or three, right? The judges come in. These are usually executives, right? Or obviously they're engineering executives. And um, there's a real energy in that room. Um, it's palpable. It really is. I've recorded some of these sessions, actually. Uh, and you can really, really sense it and you feel it. But I mean, it's all in good fun. But, but, but there's some real energy there. So, um, all right, guys. Is there anything that we haven't covered at this point? It's a comprehensive program. Uh, I'm going to put, um, actually, another question. How, how can somebody, because a lot of developers are going to be listening to this and, you know, um, or, you know, customers, and how can they get involved? I'll put it in the, in the, you know, in the, in the description below. How can someone you get it, essentially get in touch with us to um, start one of these? So we have, a, we have an email address, Jim, uh, that we'll put on the bottom of the screen here. And okay. uh, if you're interested in an event or just learning more, you can reach out to this email address uh, and we'll, we'll uh, be glad to, to get in touch with you. Okay, cool. Did I miss anything? Anything else we need to cover? I think right, we at least right and got uh, uh, most of it or all of it covered really. And I, one oh. thing that I want to let everyone know is, this three days is very high energy, right? We bring it up there, but I don't want people to think about only those three days. You know, there's more beyond it as well. We think about this as a continuous innovation, continuous collaboration kind of thing. And you learn, you build, you grow. And sometimes right, we throw some of those things, whatever we build, say, yeah, it's not work out. So it's a continuous innovation and collaboration and transformation is what I want people to think about beyond those three days. And also, just to echo that, I mean, it's beyond the three days, but it's also before the three days because there's prep work that has to happen, right? Yes. There's a certain yes. amount of process interaction with the, you know, with the customer and then with the engineering teams as well to get ready to do this. Indeed. And it's truly right, you know, our investment from Oracle side so that we want to see all our customers very successful, loan and build a lot of cool stuff. In the process, we're having a lot of fun as well. Right. <laughs> Chip, any final thoughts? Nah, Jim, I, I appreciate you putting this on. Uh, you know, I'll be at Oracle 20 years in June. And uh, these events, the passion yeah, that I see from the customer towards yes. solving problems with technology, uh, it just brings joy to my heart. And it's, it's the funnest part of my job to be with groups, solving problems, building the future uh, in the cloud. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I also got 20 years, by the way, but half of it is from Sun. And, uh, <laughs> but, but at Oracle, my last, you know, 10 years at Oracle, uh, just, um, you know, 
Uh, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just unbiased. I mean, it, it, I, no, I am actually biased. This is the coolest program, <laughs> yes. actually. Yeah. No, it's a lot of fun, guys. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. And uh, we'll, get this, uh, we'll get this out to developers and uh, see if we can get some people interested in uh, Oracle Code Innovate. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys right. later. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks, Jim. Really appreciate Bye -bye. it.